Game number three is en route. And apparently Fuser didn't get the memo that the player starting to the top right here for Mexico using the account lovely SG is indeed Maker and not Major. So it uh, looks a little bit like Fuser has to pay more attention to what's being said in the lobby. We have our Terran versus Zerg. Game number three, Mexico and uh, fin uh, Finland are currently tied. Starting to the top right here with the Terran player uh, starting for his team for Mexico. We see the Zerg player to the bottom left for Finland. It is Serral starting for Team My Insanity there as well. So a pretty interesting match that we're currently seeing unfold in front of us. It's going to be an interesting one. The first Terran versus Zerg actually of the day. So far we had two ZVZs with first of all Jim Rising taking down Pupu. And then in game number two, Serral tying things up taking on Jim Rising and now Finland and Mexico are tied in the score and let's see who's gonna take the lead there. The two players that haven't played just yet today are Wilmo for Finland and for Mexico it's gonna be Major. Major at this point uh, is probably gonna watch watching the stream as does Wilmo trying to find out exactly what's going on in the team match. Um, the players are not allowed into the lobby and Overlords making their way cross map already with gas taken for Maker. Gonna scout with his Reaper what's going on down here at the bottom. Drone going straight for the hatch first for Serral and he has another one moving over. Is he going into just scouting or are we going to see the double hatch before pool? I would be very surprised to see that. Most Terran players go for Reaper opening and if you actually dare to go into a double hatch before pool, that's kind of crazy. That Reaper is gonna like chase you down and make you pay. So yeah, he's just scouting for proxies and is starting things with this pool. That makes a lot more sense. I would have been very, very surprised to see anything else here for the reasons mentioned. You just can't deal with that Reaper if you go into double edge before a pool on a map like this. Maybe on a four player map and even that is stretching things. But yeah, Reaper is going to be sent out very soon. The drone is already on the way back. Scouted all the positions where he thought there might be something proxied already on the way back. And to the bottom left now we have also gas taken. At the beginning of the Zerg vs Terran you usually just try to uh, just buy time. Buy time for your queen to be out there. And one you have once you have that, we can just make sure that the Reaper is not gonna get any kills there. And it's more about the scouting information and about Reapers and Hellions trying to contain creep a little bit. Command center of course on the low ground. That's where we usually see the second Reaper coming into play, so that Zerg just doesn't run nearly past the Reaper, attack that SCV and delay that expansion. In this case, this won't be really a big problem for him. So we have the Reaper now on the way to the bottom left once more, trying to have a quick poke at the natural. Not really, of course, going to get anything done here. But with a jump into the main base, ooh, we can, might actually be able to kill a drone. Nah, the Zerglings are already there. Just buying the time for the Queens, that's what you need to do. Zerglings are just there to buy sometimes. The Queen, that is what really matters then. That's the big defense that you have against Reapers in the other game. Unless, of course, you have a super, super fast speed. But in this particular game, he needs to wait a little bit longer until he really has the speed there. But yeah, as you can see, the factory is already on the production tab for uh, Maker. Keep in mind, this is uh, the account up here that you see. Lovely SG is the account of Maker. The uh, second Mexican player that we have today in this Nation Wars match between Mexico and Finland. And on paper I would actually say that Finland is a little bit stronger. Not that players like Jim Rising, Maker, or Major, Bush or is not by any means. But if you uh, look at the WCS ranking uh, with uh, people like you, well, like for example Velmu or of course then also Serral here. That is a little bit heavier, like they're a bit more successful these days and also get quite some exposure. So on paper, Finland a bit stronger than Mexico, but still, we've seen a couple of upsets already. And uh, right now, uh, this is looking more and more like it's going to be a close match. I actually think it's going to be a very, very close match. It depends a lot, I feel, at the end of the day, how Major is going to perform. I really think that this is one of those games that can go into the ace match. Very fast tech into the speed upgrade for the Overlords, by the way. Gets that very, very fast in the game, so he wants to know, first of all, what exactly happens in the Moon's main base, and later on, if he goes into Ling Mira Bain Ling, he can uh, use that as well. Um, the third base is already on the way for Serral, and Stim has been started for Maker. So, uh, well, at this point, the Hellions are already on the way, and that's, of course, a hit squad that you have to just take down the Creep Tumors, and, of course, you are going to try and take out a couple of Queen Lord as well. 
One thing that we do not see just yet is either a third base or attack into Banshees. And Banshee tech is pretty unlikely since we do not have the additional gas. But it looks like he's just going to commit to quite a lot of units there on two bases, not even take that third. Pretty unusual because what we normally see is either three bases really early in the game or just the tech into the Banshee. But with all the barracks that he currently has, that's quite a potential for having the bio lineup. Overlord is trying to make his way into the base to get a quick look what exactly is happening there. Sees the tech into the starport now, or at least can assume that it's happening. But still, there's no third base. Nothing that we see in that regard. And if you look at the army supply, that's where a lot of his money went. 24 right now. But at the bottom of the map, the creep spread is starting to get decent. We have also the baneling nest started. And with the baneling nest, He's now in a position where he can really meet bio attacks without having too many problem, too many problems with that. Uh, links are also on their way, so he's getting a couple of circlings here into the picture now with a plus one plus one started in a double evolution chamber that he built to the bottom right. But we have at the same time the completed wall for Maker, who's relying on a single bunker for now to make sure that his opponent is not breaking through with the circlings. But Cyril is getting a pretty decent uh, amount of drones out there too. He's kind of looking at 43 against 38, hitting those injects, hitting them hard, not losing too much here of the inject time. We have him also over the attack and the upgrades. And still, for Maker, we do not see a third. He's not building a third, no third CC. He's just getting his army out there, he's building up his harvest account, but I'm very surprised that we do not have another command center for him. So, he has of course the potential to really do some damage with this, I mean he's at 42 army supply against 22 and I think that's the big idea behind this. The problem for him is gonna be that once this is identified, if the lava is there, banelings are gonna ruin his day like pretty soon. So this is really a scouting issue right now, is Serral gonna scout this or not? Because behind this we already have the third base now being built for Maker. What he's trying to do is just hit with the two base timing and follow that up with tech. And immediately Zerklings are being built, but what Serral needs are Banelings, and that's really not the position where you want more of those, I guess. Well, then bio units aren't there yet, so it doesn't matter too much. Having the high ground on the other hand with the Banelings, that's going to be pretty nifty for him. We have all those uh, tumors at the bottom already being taken out, and well, let's see. The Banelings are just waiting for the Marines to come in there, but we have the double medivac, also the opportunity to just drop onto that high ground, which is most likely going to happen, but the Overlord sees that too, can't even kill that. Ling's already waiting over here. Actually, quite a couple of Ling's. Oh, he's actually dropping them. Look at that. Dropping the Marines to their death. They might uh, they might have been a little bit cheeky, probably hitting on the medevac pilot, and she was so pissed that she just dropped them into the circling. So I was like, yeah, that's what you get for like hitting on a lady. Uh, you should never really miss with people that have full control over your life. Spire on the way, and I don't really think that this worked out too well for Maker. Serral was already well prepared, and he saw that there was nothing, so he assumed there was an attack and kept a couple of circlings already in the back, just simply waiting for the bailing nest and welcomed his opponent with open arms. So right now, the economy is definitely better for Serral, who has his three bases already for quite some time. The Spire is on the way. The block here against the third base, also over there. Doesn't have the burrow upgrade yet, so he cannot also, in addition to that, just move in with the circling and burrow that forcing a scan, but he takes the gold base, takes the gold base and plus two plus two is on the tab, whereas the one one is just now started for Maker, so Maker is starting to be really in some trouble here, Zerg play is way ahead in, uh, well, in upgrades, he has his tech out there, the third base is a little bit delayed, not by too much, but just by a little bit, well, by the Overlord, in, in general the third base is really late, so it's just like the third, the Overlord is not delaying the third base too much because he's already chased away by the Marines. That's what I wanted to go for. So that was a little bit confusing, that statement. Sorry for that. Um, we have the Mutalists now coming into the game and also more Harvesters. So let's just sum that up really quick. We had Major with an attempted timing at 2-2 and really trying to do some damage. Laying his third base because of it. Serral scouted early on with a really fast speed upgrade for the Overlords that there is no third base and no tech into Banshee. So he knew that something else was happening. He uh, had a couple of units ready once that Maker moved cross map and uh, Maker was not able to do any damage whatsoever, not even with a drop into the main base, which means that with the good economy that Serral had right from the beginning, he currently has a lead not only in tech, but also of course with a fourth base that he's building and thanks to the very delayed expansion of Maker, who's using the account Lovely SG here, the Terran player, it's a pretty decent position here for the Finnish Zerg player. So Finland taking quite a bit of a lead in this second game, so, uh, in, in the this third game. It's not that he's won it just yet or anything, but we have, look at that, we have Hive Tech already up. 
He will go into 3-3 immediately. The 2-2 is halfway done. We just now have 1-1 one, one completed for Maker. And he's actually losing a couple of additional seconds before he starts his own 2-2 here. So the upgrades throughout the entire game are going to be better for Serral. And that's not really a good spot for Maker to be in. That's actually exactly the opposite. That's absolutely horrible for him. If you're up, up against a Zerg player that has better upgrades than you, you are in trouble. I mean, there's another base being built now at the bottom right. The 2-2 is nearly done. Hive tech, we need to wait for that a little bit longer. But the 2-2 hasn't even started for, for Maker just yet. That gold expansion over there is already going strong. So if you look at the resources lost and the units lost, like not too much happened there. Two Mutalists were killed, but that's about it. The army supply is very much in favor of several right now. And if you take that additional upgrades also into consideration. So he has a very, very strong force. The upgrades here on 2-2 against 1-1. If you look at the upgrade starter, there's the 2-2 on the other hand. And well, there is the th the uh, lair into Hive. So he can start 3-3 now if he wants to. Mutalists are still waiting there for their chance to go into the main base. It's 19 of them. They can deal with a missile turret or two. Well, not with the missile turrets and too many of the marines on the other hand. That's definitely one of the things where you have to be a little bit careful, but still. Great army right over there. Three third attack upgrades started. And uh, also... The Adrenal Glance upgrade. Whoa! That flank! The siege tanks! Oh my god! My god, he's in... Uh, uh, wow, he's losing all of those tanks. Saril drops in supply heavily as well, but still, like, he kills every single siege tank. And that's great for him. The Mutalist numbers, they are still at 16. If you look at the resources lost, like 6,100 at this point. Look at the creep spread, by the way. 6,200 against nearly 5,000. There's another base being built. This is base number 6, by the way. Sarah lost quite a lot of supply there, but still, he can afford that. And Maker cannot really. Especially since those upgrades are just going to be uh, in favor of uh, Sarah once again. And he had the bank to really rebuild this army quickly. And with all those, those siege tanks gone, that aggression that we saw there didn't really work out for him in the end. The 2-2 now on the way, but still the lead in upgrades for Sarah. And look at all those spaces. I mean, that is absolutely crazy. They creeps, but he's covering half, more than half, of the map already in creep. He knows everything that's going on. Ultralis cavern on the way. Adrenaline glance about to be done. And, well, Maker, he's in so much trouble right now. And he knows it as well. Right over here, the Marines with another stim. There are definitely enough medivacs to make up for that. We have 10 of those already. Just trying to have a quick look over there. The Mutalists are still trying to see a chance to go into the main base. All the way down to the bottom of the map. How many Banes do we have? 33 of those. 22 Mutalisks. And the Mutalists are on their way again. Trying to snipe a Medivac or two. Getting one. Forcing a Stim. Well done already. Another scan. Checking out that army here once more. All those Banelings. Plus three armor on the way. And, well, once again, the lead are going to be soon for Serral in the upgrades. Here we go. He's moving in. He's sniping the siege tanks with the Mutalists. One, two, three, four, man. A lot of them, actually. Takes down all of the siege tanks. Serral is starting to take down this army of his opponent. The Mutalists need to run away or fly away a little bit to take cover. The Zerglings are definitely shielding those. But this is just way too much. Maker cannot afford to lose this much. He's at 10,000 resource loss against 12,000. If he can get that base up here and get that running, that would be great for him because then he has like a much better economy that he uh, controls right now and he could really afford trades like this. But at this point, you know, the uh, third attack upgrade about to be started. Katina's Playdung is on the way. The third armor upgrade as well, plus two attack for the Mutalist. The upgrades are really in the end going to be a big issue. Even with the 3-3 now on the way for Maker, it's going to be a kind of a bit of a problem. Mutalists can now go straight into the main base if they want to. There's only one missile turret and they can take that down. The rest of the army is already just meeting in the middle of the map. So many additional bailings are being built. Down here, a lot of harvesters over there as well. The harvester got 81 against 89 at this point. The Zerg player is trying to run in again with the bailings. Look, that creep spread is nearly at the third base of Maker already. But Maker is still holding on. He's still holding on. The problem is how is he going to deal with all those Ultralists? Ultralists are moving in right now. Has a couple of siege tanks. But, well, the Ulis are leading the charge. And the Banelings are trying to roll into the Marines. Getting a few kills there. Most of that Terran army already down. He's dropping an army supply down to 57 against 101. Serral is rebuilding his army with the resources that it has. That huge bank for the Finnish player. Mexico is in trouble. That natural is exposed. Ultralists everywhere. Mutalists as well. The GG called as Maker 
leaves the game and Finland takes a 2-1 lead over Mexico, forcing out Major as the third player for his team.